All living things carry out different types of life processes, such as breathing, excretion, defecation, response to stimuli, growing, and reproduction. These processes are important to ensure the existence and survival of mankind and to protect humans from danger. Hello boys and girls and thank you for watching ITTV. Well, in the previous lesson, we learned about the basic need of living things, animals, plants and humans. Well, do you still remember what we learned in our previous lesson? Well, in today's lesson, we would be learning about the living processes in these living things. So, today's lesson is Human Breathe. All humans need to breathe in order to survive. Well, breathing is a continuous process. Well, let's have a look at this picture, shall we? What is this person doing? She is actually practicing yoga. Well, what is she actually doing? Look at the placement of her hand. Why don't we try doing what is she doing? Well, take your hand and place on your chest and feel for the chest movement. Those movements are breathing. Now children, it is important that you understand that every chest movement is the breathing in your body. Well, Humans have got various systems. We breathe thanks to the respiratory system. Those systems have got various organs in them. Shall we see what the respiratory system consists of? Well, they actually consist of the nose, the mouth, the windpipe, the lungs and diaphragm. Now, let's have a look at the chart beside me to see exactly where all these organs are placed in the respiratory system. This is the respiratory chart. It consists of the nose and the mouth which leads to the breathing tube also known as the windpipe. From the windpipe, it divides into two smaller tubes leading to the right lung and the left lung. Down here is the muscular structure called the diaphragm. Shall we see what all these organs do much more in detail? Well, the nose, it consists of fine hairs to prevent the dust from entering the nose and also other fine particles. Next, let's have a look at the windpipe. It's a tube-like structure which has a pathway for the entrance of air into the lung and it also branches into two smaller tubes known as the bronchus. Next, the lungs. The lungs are actually soft tissues. They are large and pink in color. And they are located in the human cavity known as the thoracic cavity. We have got two lungs, which are the left and the right ones. These further divide into lobes. Okay, shall we see the diaphragm? The diaphragm is actually made out of pure muscles that separate the thoracic cavity from the abdomen. We humans are made in such a way that the organs of the thoracic cavity do not mix with those in the abdominal cavity. So what you eat and drink does not mix with the oxygen you inhale. Children, have you wondered what is the breathing process? Well, the breathing process have got two main items in them. The first one being inhalation, which means to breathe in, and exhalation, which means to breathe out. Children, try it at home. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Next, what happens while you inhale and exhale? Shall we look at the chart? Okay, children, shall we see what happens during the process of inhalation and exhalation? Well, during inhalation, your lungs expand so that the air from outside can enter into your lungs. The diaphragm contracts and flattens while your rib moves up. This facilitates the air from outside to enter into your lungs. The in Inhaled air is full of oxygen. Shall we see what happens during the exhalation process? 
Well, your diaphragm relaxes and curves up. Your lungs contract so that the air can be exhaled out. Your ribs return to the normal position. The exhaled air is filled with carbon dioxide. Well, children, do you understand how the process of inhalation, which is to breathe in, and exhalation, which is to breathe out, takes place? Well, shall we move over to the board to see how does this air follow till they reach your lungs? Following is the passage of air during inhalation and exhalation. Well, during inhalation, the oxygen in the surrounding air is inhaled by humans. Do you know that the inhaled air contains 21% of oxygen? What is this oxygen used for? Breathing, of course. This oxygen is transferred to your nose and mouth. Well, humans usually do not use their mouths to breathe because, do you remember children earlier we discussed that the nose have got fine hairs to stop the dust and fine particles from entering into the lungs. But does the mouth have hair? Of course no. So from the nose or the mouth, the oxygen further travels down the windpipe. The windpipe is also known as the trachea. The windpipe branches into two and thus reaches your lungs. In your lungs, there are smaller tubes called the blood capillaries. The blood capillaries diffuses the oxygen into the blood. Enough about inhalation. What about exhalation? During the process of exhalation, the carbon dioxide, which is released from your lungs, travels to the windpipe, which is the trachea, and out through your nose and mouth. The exhale, carbon dioxide, it's about 4%. Well, children, are you familiar now what happens during the process of inhalation and exhalation and how the air from your lung travels out to the environment? Who uses this carbon dioxide? The plants, of course. For what process? Remember your previous lesson, the process of photosynthesis. The rate of breathing is the number of chest movement in a period of time. Children, different people have got different rates of breathing. The rates of breathing also depend on the activities that you do, whether you're resting, you're jogging, you're climbing the stairs, or swimming. Well, if you do more active exercises, you need more energy. Where does this energy come from? It comes from the respiration process, of course. So, if you need more energy to do more activity, that means you need more oxygen. Well, children, all living things need oxygen to survive, don't they? Well, what is the oxygen used for? Of course, the process of respiration. Well, do you know the equation for the process of respiration? Let's have a look. Food plus oxygen gives you carbon dioxide, water vapor and energy. Well, all those rice, chicken, meat and fish that you eat will be broken down into finer particles. These food particles will then combine with oxygen to release the carbon dioxide, water vapor and energy. The energy released during the respiration process is used to carry out body activities like growth, excretion and to repair your body tissues. Well children, let's have a look at the following steps of an experiment to see what actually is the breathing rate and how they differ. The goal of the experiment is to find out whether humans have different breathing rates. What are the variables? The constant variable would be one minute recording of the chest movement. The manipulated variable would be the activities that you're going to carry out. The responding variable would be your and your friend's breathing rate. What are the materials and apparatus needed for this experiment? Only two, a stopwatch and a notebook. Well, shall we see what are the methods for this experiment? Firstly, you have to work in two groups. Each group will have three students in them. You can choose any activities that you like, for example, running, climbing stairs and sit-ups. 
each members in the group have to be doing the same activity. After doing the activity, you have to count the number of chess movements in a minute. Record all these findings in your notebook. Well, you can find the breathing rate for your friends and the, your friends can help you find yours. So students, at the end of the experiment, in your record books, you would find that the breathing rate of your friend and yours would differ for the activities that they do. The activities like climbing stairs and sit-ups requires more energy, so they would have different kind of breathing rates. So, what is the conclusion for this experiment, children? That different human beings have got different breathing rates. Well, children, shall we see a few exercises regarding how humans breathe? Question 1. Which of the following is not part of the breathing track? A. Heart B. Lungs C. Windpipe and D. Nose Now, recall children, do you remember the passage of air in your breathing track? It goes from your nose and mouth to the windpipe to the lungs. So, what is the correct answer? The correct answer would be heart. Heart is not part of the breathing tract, but is part of the blood circulatory system. Shall we go to the next question? Question 2. The picture above shows the product of respiration. What is it? A. Oxygen B. Water vapor C. Nitrogen and D. Energy Now, children, remember the equation of the respiration process. Food and oxygen would give you carbon dioxide, water vapor and energy. So, what is the correct answer? What is this boy blowing out into? The correct answer would be water vapor. Let's see the next question, shall we? What happens to the breathing rate of the person? What is the person doing, children? He is actually having a jog, isn't he? Well, when you exercise, what happens to your breathing rate? A. No changes B. It decreases and C. Increases The correct answer would be C. Increases Let us have a look at the next question, children. Question 4 what is the function of the hair in the nose? Well, what do you think, children? The answer would be, it filters dust from the air. Remember, children, nose, all of human nose have got hair. It is to filter the fine particles from the outside air so that clean air gets into your lung. Well, we have done with the exercises. Shall we see the vocabulary for the day? Inhale, humbus nafas. Inhale, tari nafas. Breathing rate, kada pranafasan. Breathing rate is the amount of chest movement in a period of time. Chest, tadu. Windpipe, salo pranafasan. What is another name for windpipe? The medical term for it is trachea. Lungs, purparu. Well, children, were those exercises difficult for you? Well, I hope not. Well, now I'm going to let you into a little secret about yawning. Let's have a look at this picture. Well, children, in this picture, you can see most of them yawning away. The man, the lady, and the baby even. So, have you yawned so far in school while you were learning? Look at your parents. Are they yawning? So, shall we see why humans yawn? A yawn seems to be the body's way of getting more oxygen to the brain to make us feel more lively. When we yawn, we take in air slowly and deeply and then breathe it out. We seem to yawn mostly when we are tired or bored or sitting in a stuffy room. Yawning can be a sign that a person needs more air. So, children, if you see your parents yawning away, ask them to stop, take a drink of water or wash their face in the cold water to stop them from yawning. Well, you have learned the secret of yawning. Go to school and ask your friends, why do humans yawn? And see whether they give you the correct answer or not. 
Shall we see the next secret question? Why do we pan after running fast? Well, in this picture, you can see an athlete running. You can see the calf muscle and you can see the comic-like picture where the man is actually panting away. Well, children, I'm sure you do running in school during your sports lessons. Well, do you pen? Why do we pen? When you pen after a sprint, you are paying the oxygen tap. Tap meaning you owe someone something. Exercise that makes your body take in more oxygen causes a buildup of lactic acid a waste product. Once the exercise is over, the liver processes the lactic acid using oxygen to break it down. The oxygen tap is the amount of oxygen you must take in to process the lactic acid that is built up. Well children, that's all for today. Before I end, I would like to do a quick recap of what we've learned today. Well, we learned that breathing involves the process of inhalation and exhalation. The breathing track consists of the nose, the mouth, the windpipe and the lungs. And breathing rate is the amount of chest movement in a period of time. Different people have got different breathing rates. Well, children, that's all for today. Thank you for watching ITTV. I'll see you soon in our next lesson. Bye-bye.